Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to Indie Showcase Sunday. Today we are going to be continuing Palm Simulator 9000 from where we left off. That title still makes me laugh. So, I believe this is where we left off. Um, uh, Callie was asking if we want to... Cat, what are you doing? <laughs> I have a cat in my lap. <laughs> uh, Callie was asking if our main character, Diego, wants to go to the park and test out his new transformation, which is a, a Pomeranian. <laughs> uh, we will do it. I'll do it. All right. God, we need someone to clean these damn sidewalks. That probably sketches a pretty pessimistic picture of my mind, but that's the first thing I notice. I'm only a little bit bigger than a football, so I am getting up way more close and personal than I ever wanted to be to the f familiar route I walk almost every day. And it's not like the first time I've done this as a dog, but my normal canine form is a little more than three foot tall at the shoulder. Sure, that's a pretty big downgrade from my usual six foot four, but this is a kind of shortness I could never imagine. <laughs> I'm maybe a foot tall, and I think it's mainly my ears bringing me up to the maybe. My body is... my body is basically the shape of a stuffed animal, though picking out a shape is hard with all the fur. I'm fluffy. I'm really fluffy. <laughs> from my ears to the tip of my ridiculous cartoon drawing of a tail, puffed out instead of curled in, one of the several small things betraying the fact that I'm not a real Pomeranian, the tail's roughly half the length of my entire body. Everything else is small. I'm small. Jesus Christ, I am fucking small. <laughs> Puppy! My better-than-human hearing brings the little girl's squeak to a high shriek as she passes and points, and I nearly freak out as I process how goddamn huge she looks to me. Her outstretched hand could easily turn my head into mush, like some death trap from a Saw movie. Thankfully, her mother keeps a firm grip on the other death trap. Don't bother them, honey, she murmurs, and I say a quick mental thank you, making sure to stay close to Calliope. It's actually more complicated than it seems, walking at a steady enough pace to keep in time with her steps while not letting the leash go slack enough to potentially trip her. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, okay, yeah, I know. The whole being walked on a leash by your girlfriend thing probably sounds a bit weird. Is... it is weird. I'm the one who does it, and it still feels pretty weird. The thing is, I'm technically not supposed to do the whole shape-shifting thing in public. I mean, I can't even complain in my case. Even if displaying your eccentric abilities in public isn't frown or wasn't frowned upon, if not flat-out illegal in a lot of places, transformation isn't exactly pretty. Shifting at home just cuts out a very messy step, as well as a lot of screaming and horrified children. But it does also mean I have to pretend to just be a normal dog whenever we scout in place whenever we scout a place off hours. I don't know, it's not as bad as it probably sounds. I've had a lot of practice pretending to be a dog. The leash and collar is still kind of new, but you can get used to pretty weird stuff. Though this time around the collar was a little too big, so we had to improvise. We're here, Calliope murmurs, a few seconds after I began to pick up all the telltale smells. Sun-warmed grass, flowers beginning to poke out to meet spring, the earthy scent of trees, even the dead wood of the benches. My ears perk a little, and I begin to scamper a bit faster. It's an average size park, a few pieces of playground equipment, some bushes, some water fountains, a track for joggers, and a nice fountain right in the middle to bring it together. It's been a grass target for echo manifest er, infestations in the past, and I've memorized all the grass typical spots they've appeared in the past. I could probably lead us through all of grass them with my eyes closed. <laughs> There's grass. There's grass, whatever. 
There's grass all over the park. It's just regular grass. It's not like I want to flop down on it or anything. I flop down on the grass and roll on my back. I roll, 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 kicking my goofy little legs towards the sun. The sky spreads above me, more impossibly vast than it's ever looked. The slightly sour smell of grass is everywhere, only broken up by the occasional trace of a dandelion or flower. Or stray flower. The smell of the beginning of spring. It's like smelling all of the new life is infecting me with energy, making my blood rush and my heart chug like an airplane engine cat is no longer on my lap. I have been abandoned. <laughs> uh, I stop and stand up with as much dignity as a Pomeranian can muster. Calliope watches, apparently having squatted down while I was... I give a polite little canine cough. She looks at me curiously. But you didn't have to stop. I cock my head at her. Weren't we supposed to be here for a reason? Oh. Yes, right, the echo. Calliope clears her throat. Well, uh, let's start with all the usual places then. We saunter like the professionals we are. Our first stop is a particularly large oak tree. It's old and twisted, and most importantly, hollow. We found echo hiding in the trunk a few times, but as we approach it right away, I can tell there's the- I can tell that the tree's empty. The smell of Echo is distinct, and I can't pick up even an old trace of it today. But I can pick up the trace of something, uh, scroll, 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 scroll. <laughs> Even after the little rodent scampers into the cover of leaves far ahead, I can't help yapping after its tail. I actually managed to make it a couple of feet up the bent body of the tree before I get a hold of myself, and gravity gets a hold of me. Mortified, I slide down the trunk with a pathetic little scrap of my claws. <laughs> Thank God for all the fur, because my face feels like it's on fire. But when I turn to Calliope, she doesn't look annoyed or irritated. Or as annoyed as irritated as she ever looks, I guess. She seems happy. Like, visibly happy. She stands relaxed, hands perched in her pockets, that soft look in her eyes again, her lips curved into a very slight crescent. She looks at me as if she just watched me hang every single star in the sky. My face casually goes from burning to blazing. <laughs> After a moment, she realizes that I've lost interest in my target. Oh, uh, good job. I mean, that wasn't an echo, I guess, but that was a fairly good attempt at chasing a squirrel. Er, I tilt my head. If I had proper eyebrows, I'd be cocking them. Well, the most important thing is this area is safe. Uh, why don't we continue? <laughs> I try to sound as suspicious as I feel. <laughs> so our little echo hunt continues, surprisingly light on the hunting part. Calliope seems intent on not only taking the longest routes through the park, but also standing aside while I get the urge to roll around or bark at a grasshopper or smell everything I can get my dopey little snout at. <laughs> I feel like I should maybe give her a tiny yip to remember to try and keep my dog pea brain on task, or at the very least try not to give in to my not Pomeranian instincts. But... But... Well, I kind of don't want to. I used to use my hellhound form primarily as a means of survival, where whenever it would be a bigger boon to me than my human body. Like, just as an example, replacing myself with a dog when there were a couple of suspicious cops in the area. Then, when I joined the Bureau, it turned into a strategy to make my job a little easier. Whether it was my own survival or my mission, I was usually- I usually was too fo bleh, laser focused on bigger things to let myself sink into the more playful part of my canine brain. And now, in this new body, familiar enough to be comfortable, yet different enough to feel interesting, and fo following Calliope's advice, letting myself forget about all the bigger things on my mind, Something weird happens. I start having fun. We walk around the park, ostensibly still trying to sniff out Echo, but I find myself preoccupied with other things. My senses are strumming with all the sound and scent all around us. Even my vision, a downgrade from my human eyes, picks up new things with my new point of view. We walk. We scout. I go running after every wild animal I can find. 
Catching a squirrel is an impossible dream, but the fun is in seeing them scamper, all the adrenaline in their bodies turning them into little lightning sparks covered in fur. Birds are even more fun because of the sound. Once, I'm able to catch a whole flock of pigeons off guard. The motions of their wing... The motion of their wings beating is almost music, every ruffle and movement of feather and wings filling my body to its brim. I watch their shadows overlap into unearthly shapes on the sidewalk. I inspect other dogs with their owners, typically from a distance. My nose sorts through every subtlety and note to inform my mind things I couldn't possibly process as a human. Breed, age, lifestyle. With the peace, yeah, with the people, there's even more things to sort through. The scratchy plastic flower scents of soaps and perfumes, the metal twang of piercings and jewelry. Every bit of clothing along has a, er, alone, I think if that is supposed to say, has its own unique smell. The fragrance of plants and animal furs ling lingering in the thread, even when run through countless strange hand machines and hands. I scamper through just about every square inch of grass I can find, and go darting after whatever flash of insect life I can find. Grasshoppers are a fantastic puzzle, vanishing into thin air with a kick of their legs, leaving me to turn every which way through the grass and sniff until I can find them again, starting the game all over again. Spiders are strange little twitches of movement and limb, darting and halting, darting and halting. Lizards are even better with their slippery gallop bigger, with bulgier eyes, and their scaly skin a whole, new scent, a whole new kind of scent entirely. At one point I see a butterfly and nearly lose my damn gorge, because it keeps just far away, it keeps just far away to keep out of my snapping mouth, but only just. I turn giddy, dizzy circles round and round, leaping and yapping and chomping again and again at empty air knowing for a fact that I'm never going to catch that fluttery little fucker and I don't even care. Somewhere behind me is my human mind, knowing I look absolutely ridiculous. Even further behind is all the things I'm worried about, every responsibility and fear shouting at me, trying to make me remember. And I just don't care. How could I ignore all this? How could I not be happy in a world this full of life? The butterfly finally gets bored of teasing me and flies off, and I finally collapse on my back, desperately panting for air, legs still giving little kicks every once in a while. With the sky spinning, the whole... Uh, the world starting to glow gold in the fading light of the afternoon, with countless scents and sounds all around me, the single thing I wish for in this moment is my voice. Because at this moment, if I was a human, I would be overflowing with laughter. A shadow falls over me. Same soft eyes. Same fond little smile. She says, Are you thirsty? While the, sh bleh, while the city could do a better job in maintaining the roads and sidewalks, I have to at least give them props for proper upkeep of the parks. Especially in regards to their newest move, installing water fountains that have a mechanism specifically for letting dogs drink. Obviously, I am more than a little thankful for that part of the deal right now. With Calliope's help, I walk on somewhat shaky legs to the nearest fountain, still a little wired on all the adrenaline and silent not laughter. The moment I plunge my snout into the cold torrent of water is like a blessing from God. I am so involved in slurping up as much water as my tongue can catch, I don't even notice the woman approaching. Oh my gosh, he's so cute! I cough and get a few liters of water all over myself. I turn away from the spout to find three women with ponytails and sweatpants looking down at me. They must be doing some sort of group workout thing. Calliope seems to have been taken a little off guard by them too. Oh, um, thank you. I mean, she fiddles with a bit of hair spilling over her shoulder, probably to make sure it doesn't accidentally start squirming in public. On his behalf. She gestures to me, and the ladies giggle, mistaking her politeness for a joke. Well, he is a handsome little guy, one of the women says. What's his name? Diego, Calliope blurts, and a quick wince flashes over her face. We kind of came to an agreement ages ago that she'd come up with a fake name for my dog form. Uh, it'd probably look suspicious if the girl who sometimes walked a weird dog happened to also sometimes walk with a weird boy with the same name. He, um, 
The woman look at her again and she flusters. He's like a Pomeranian, I think. For the first time in a while, my good mood fades a little. Calliope doesn't do very well with strangers and often beats herself up when she knows she's acted a little awkward. Oh, what a mood. I walk to her side and bump my head against her ankle, hoping that maybe I can help her relax a little. She stoops down in a surprisingly graceful move to... What? Calliope stands again, holding me carefully, one hand supporting my lower half, one on my front. It's the equivalent of suddenly being yanked about 30 feet in the air, held only by a giant. A slightly nervous giant. My lower paws kick. I squirm a little. I should be terrified out of my mind. I think part of me is. Yet, most of me isn't. Despite all the nerves on her end, Calliope's hands are firm, yet gentle. I've always liked her hands. Fingers thin to the point of being a little bony, yet strong. Now they're not only strong, they're big enough to support me easily. Hell, I'm pretty sure she could support me in a single palm if she were careful enough. Her hands aren't just big to me in this state, they're massive. If the fear of being hell of being this high up should have terrified me, being in the grasp of someone this mind-bogglingly colossal to me should have left me a whimpering, yelping mess. But but it doesn't. I'm not. I feel safe. Pet him if you like. I hadn't even been aware of her talking while my mind had processed what was happening. He likes being pet by pretty girls, she adds, and wow. Okay. Even facing away from her, I can hear the quirk of her lip in her voice. <laughs> I huff a little, half wondering why she bothered letting me run around without the leash if she was just going to drag me like this. <laughs> and suddenly I can't wonder anything, because a massive hand is tickling me under my chin. <laughs> Aw, hello Diego. Aren't you a handsome boy? Uh. Aw, <laughs> look how happy he looks. Another hand follows up, taking note to give me a few good deep scratches behind my ear with a set of elegantly manicured nails. You're so well behaved, aren't you? Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's so calm, isn't he? My dog always freaks out around new people. The third woman carefully massages my scalp with her fingers. You're such a good boy, Diego. Okay, 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 I don't hate this. This is good. It's nice. It's pretty nice. Calliope's voice sounds strangely far away to me. Would you like to hold him? I think he might let you. The woman passed me among each other, and that's a sentence I don't think I ever could have imagined saying about myself in, about myself this morning or any other point of my life. <laughs> But I am passed around and petted and praised. Aren't you a sweetheart? <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> I'm stroked by what feels like endless affectionate little touches. I'm acutely aware of every nerve in my body going electric with every loving hand on me. <laughs> this... Nobody take anything I'm reading here out of context. Nobody take anything I'm saying here out of context for the love of God. <laughs> Uh, fingers, unfamiliar but not unfriendly, sink into my fur and knead at me like they're trying to rub every last ounce of tension out of my body. You're so good. For a moment, I swear to God, I'm going to melt out of their arms. One by one, every muscle in my body goes liquid, utterly slack and sated. My eyelids sink along with them, in a state between aware awareness and sleep, as I'm showered with touch and warmth. Again and again and again. Aw, poor little guy. He looks tuckered out. Haha. <laughs> we should kind of get back, shouldn't we? Yeah, I want to catch a bus before it gets too dark. Nice meeting you. A laugh. Thanks for letting us bother your dog. Somehow, I don't think he was bothered. Calliope's voice is low and amused next to my ear. Somewhere along the line, without me realizing, I had been passed back to her. I'm vaguely aware of the woman's footsteps growing softer in the distance. Were you bothered? Calliope carefully turns me in her arms to look at me. I'm sorry I couldn't really ask, I just thought, you've liked being petted in the past. Um, did you enjoy that? I hang limply in her arms, utterly blissed out. 
<laughs> my tongue hangs out of my mouth. My paws still occasionally give little twitches at the memory of every touch. I am taking a carefully calculated guess, and that guess is that you enjoyed that. I nod. Hmm. She holds me there for a moment as I try to regain my bearings. Good, she murmurs. And after a brief pause, she gently brings me up to press her cheek against my head. You're, um, very cute in this form. She only stays there for a moment before pulling me back. I thought I should probably tell you that. I smile, as much as a dog can smile. Not just because now I'm definitely 100% sure of what I've suspected for a while. I smile because I feel utterly at peace. After a few seconds of silence, held still in the descending spring evening, she starts to walk. It is getting late, she murmurs. We should probably go to the grocery store before it gets too dark. Calliope heads back towards the way we came, either forgetting or not bothering to set me on the ground. I want to get at least a few things for tonight. Laying in her arms, I finally get enough of a hold of myself to use my throat again. <laughs> what? She looks down at me. Is something wrong? I turn my snout down and give her a pointed look. Oh, are you worried about the echo? She winds a finger through her hair again. Well, we did a pretty wide sweep of the park, and I made sure to double check places where you were, uh, distracted. So I think we can consider this place safe for the moment. You're really bad at being shrewd, Miss Thanos. That actually makes Calliope halt for a few seconds. I think I see a bit of her hair fluff up a bit. She looks down at me, eyes going wide for a second. It looks as smug as a Pomeranian can look. My name is Calliope. Quick as a flash, she regains her composure. And dogs don't talk. Who's talking? I laugh right before the mouth on my neck seals up once more into nothing but fur. <laughs> a little down the street is the familiar tangle of construction that has quite literally divided the neighborhood for the past few months. All the workers are gone for the evening, but Calliope still has to do a little careful maneuvering around the barriers to get to the front of the, gro of the corner store. After a moment's consideration, she carefully slides me into her big canvas bag. I'm pretty sure I've seen other people do this with their dogs, she murmurs, securing the strap over her shoulder. If they kick us out, it'll be on very flimsy foundations. By the time we make it past the sliding doors, my tail is already wagging. It's not even a big store, but the scent alone is making me excited. Countless foods from all over the building are reaching out towards me. Even the people, far and few between this late in the day, are still interesting islands of variety between the ocean of snow. The harsh light combined with the peppy... M muzak? Music? What? Quietly drifting around my head makes for a weird, floaty feeling of calm. It feels almost like I'm drifting. Calliope grabs a basket and starts with the produce section, probably to get the vegetables on display before the staff has to take them down. I prop my paws over the edge of the bag, snout, bleh, snout snuffling for interesting smells. Carrots, they're sent orange and hard as you'd expect. Lettuce, watery and mild. Peppers, colorful and lively. The air in this section of the store is artificially chilly, tickling my nose and making me sneeze, a comically high-pitched squeak of noise. I catch the corner of Calliope's lip twitching. And just as suddenly, it goes tight. Uh-oh. I pause momentarily distracted from the medley of scents. My gaze moves from her face to her hand, in the middle of inspecting the pebbly skin of an avocado. Her joints go tense and clawed, the tendons behind her knuckles becoming so tight that for a second I'm afraid they'll snap. Calliope relaxes. She slowly brings the avocado back to the display, letting it roll down her wrist and land with a thump. Like a mechanical doll, she turns smoothly on her heel and continues to a new section of the produce area. She doesn't give any sign that anything is out of the ordinary. Calliope? At least... That's what I try to say. 
Instead, it comes out as a very small arf. Her chin remains firm and straight, not even bobbing or rising in line with her footsteps. I notice a flicker of movement a bit outside of my field of vision. Two young women looking at the apples, their heads turning in tandem to the sound of my voice, eyes going wide when they see me. One smiles and titters to the other, and I remember the woman at the park. I think again of being showered by praise and affection, and wonder if I'll ask Calliope to... But no, no, something was wrong with Calliope, wasn't there? I had to get her attention, get her to step out to someplace more private... But then, she seemed fine now, and if she kept going on, she'd go past those girls, and... I think we should let her keep going. Let Calliope keep going. Calliope's a tough girl. And she seems fine now, right? I look over her from head to toe, and nothing seems out of the ordinary. I want to see what's up. Because something is obviously up. Uh, She's probably just starting to get a headache or something. Calliope had told me to let her worry about everything today, and here I am, fretting over something small and silly like a headache. I sigh, shaking my head as Calliope heads for a stand of lemons. There was far more important things to think about, like the warm and bubbly scent of citrus or the cute girls who were heading our way. And everything falls. Calliope drops to her right knee like the lower part of her leg has vanished. Her arm shoots out in a mad attempt to catch herself and only ends up in the hold of the loose lemons on display, sending a good seven or eight that cascading to the floor along with us. The basket joins them an instant later with a loud plastic crack. She brings her arm up just in time to keep the bag from touching the ground, but the sudden drop makes me feel like all my insides have just hit my feet and bounced up and bounced back up into place. By the time my heart rate starts to slow back to normal, I hear voices. Miss, are you okay? The two women, joined by a frantic store clerk. They swarm around Calliope, trying to support her slack shoulders or help her up. I start to bark without thinking, half trying to get them to give her some room, half desperately urging her to stand. And she stands. Calliope gets to her feet with a weirdly mechanical speed, with no one's help but her own. The others stare, wavering anxiously between stepping forward and standing back before the clerk pipes up. Ma'am, are you... I'm alright, thank you. Her tone is granite stiff, words coming out like chips of rock. Her head is still angled weirdly towards the floor. I'm very sorry. Do you need... are you epileptic? Diabetic? Do you need insulin or something? I'm fine. She pulls at the strap of her bag like a lifeline. I only tripped. I just need to get some air. With ginger, mincing footsteps, Calliope stalks past the others, past the stands, past the doors. It's the tail end of sunset now. The air is starting to get chilly, and I see a street lamp flicker to life far down the road. Calliope hesitates on the threshold of the store for just a moment, and I can feel the tremor of her hand on her bag. She steps one way, then another, and then finally settles on the edge of the curb only a few feet away. Sitting silently, she bunches her legs as close as she can to her body. Bones and muscle and red cheeks and wide eyes. Wide black eyes staring at empty air. Calliope. Quietly, her hair begins to writhe. I crawl out of the bag, plopping paws first down on her lap. It's all right. No one's around. I look up at her, hoping I can at least put my wet, dopey puppy eyes to good use. But she still just stares into nothing. I... Are you okay? Are you hurt? What happened? A breeze pushes some flyaway bits of hair down her chin. I'm fine. Her lips move slowly, almost mechanical. I hurt my left ankle while training yesterday. I thought it was doing better. It started aching again, and I wasn't prepared. Why didn't you say anything about it? It was just a small injury. I didn't even twist it. She exhales, and the hair hanging by her arm corkscrews in time with it. I guess it was just a little worse off than I thought. But it's nothing I can't handle. Calliope closes her eyes, and her shoulders relax a little. I'm feeling better. 
let's go back inside and finish quickly. She places her hands on the pavement. There is definitely something else going on here. Calliope, wait. Is there something you're not telling me? Red, hold on. She lets her eyelids fall shut for a moment, her hair rippling in the cold night air. Yes? Calliope, come on. Cut the crap. I know there's something you're not telling me. I hear the light tap of her fingers drumming against the pavement. I told you. For one thing, you couldn't even keep your story straight. You slipped on your right foot. The tapping stops. I place a paw on the corner of my bandana, wriggling out of it so my mouth is unobscured. Calliope, please. Carefully, I crawl across her lap, gently propping my front paws on her waist, as if trying to climb up her body. Tell me what's wrong. A street lamp clicks to life, only a few feet away. It cuts Calliope's body down the center, one part warm and yellow, one part dark and blue. Her eyelashes catch the light, turned near transparent in the glow. She doesn't open her eyes. You were so... strange last night. Troubled. Anxious. Her voice is so soft it has to float down to me. I said... I was the one who said that I didn't want you worrying about anything last... about anything tonight. I wanted to take your mind off the things that were troubling you, but now all I'm doing is making you worry about something else. Hey. I gently bump my head against her. Stop. The wind picks up. I feel my fur ripple. Look, it's not a case of making me worry or not. Letting myself slide back down into her lap, I lay across her legs. It's fine if you want to give me some time to relax or whatever, but you shouldn't do it at the expense of yourself. I roll over on my side, giving myself one eye to look up at her. It's not fair, you know? Where, when you're in a relationship, it can't just be one person who gets all the benefits. That's not a relationship. For everything you receive, you have to give as much back. I've got my own shit, yeah? But it doesn't make whatever you're dealing with any less important. If you need to tell me something's wrong, it's not selfish or anything. This is what I'm here for. That's what people do when they... <sighs> Under all the fuzz, I feel my face heat up, and at the last moment I change course. When they care about each other. How could I honestly say I cared about you if I ignored you because your problems were less important than mine? So, look. You said you'd choose to be responsible for me earlier. So now I want to choose that too. Let me be responsible. Just let me listen. For a few minutes, or for however long you need. That's what I want. That's what my choice is. As I speak, her eyes still hang closed. But in the buzz of my silence, after what feels like a week's worth of stillness, she lets them slide open. Calliope's chin tips up, up to the sky. Above us, past the glow of the lamp, stars are starting to push through the night sky. I wasn't lying. I really did hurt my foot during practice, but that's not why I fell. Her shoulders rise and fall. I think my painkillers aren't working anymore. Ah. How long has it been? It was only... It couldn't be more than six months ago. Only six months ago, plus the six or seven weeks when she... I swallow hard. The... You would think I would know how to pronounce this word, considering it's, like, the name of a... Oh, cat cameo, I think. But it's the name of a Roman god, I believe, but I'm not sure. I want to say it's, like, Yanis? Uh, the... Yanis. We'll go with that. Incident. A series of crimes and violent encounters, an eccentric with a rare and extremely dangerous ability. We had been trying to find him for a while, and our last encounter had ended with us, quite literally, with the upper hand. We thought we could get him. Things didn't go so hot. If it hadn't been for Calliope, neither of us would have made it out. 
mangled badly in incredible pain. She still managed to take him down, but at the cost of an incredible strain on her body. For a while, I don't think any of us thought she would make it. Right. I remember the exact number now. Fifty-two. Fifty-two days of eternity. But she woke up. She woke up and was out of the hospital in less than a month. In almost no time, her hair was back to its was almost back to its original length. And after an unbelievable, an unbelievably awkward time of futzing around, plus some assorted yelling, crying, and hugging, we were actually able to talk about our feelings. We got together. She was alive. It was a pretty smooth ending. Except... Except both the injuries and the effects of her plan had taken their toll. Permanent nerve damage, Dr. Taiwo said, was a common problem for type Gorgons. The source of their strength was also their biggest weak point. The damage her hair had received during her childhood had already condemned her to chronic pain by her 40s, but the incident pushed the process ahead a couple of decades. Still, I thought everything would be okay. Dr. Taiwo had simply prescribed Calliope a small troop of medications, and she was good as new. I thought she was good as new. She acted good as new. But how long? How long have they not been working? Hard to say. She hooks a finger through a lock of hair hanging down her shoulder, and as she coils it, it catches the lamplight. I can pick out a half dozen different colors. Orange, brown, copper, yellow, white, even a single hair strand that looks almost pink. Maybe two weeks ago? At first I just thought it was the normal effect of the dosage wearing off, but... She presses her lips together for a second. Eventually, I realized it just wasn't working as effectively as before. So, what just happened was... Her hand slows to a halt. My ankle... most of my lower leg. For a moment, I couldn't put any weight on it. The pain was almost unbearable. Finally, she drops her head, but her eyes look past me, to her right foot. It's... mostly fine now. I'll be able to walk home. This isn't the first time this has happened, is it? She's silent. I swallow again. Yesterday. You didn't go shopping, but you said it wasn't because you forgot. It was only for a few moments. I should have gone once it stopped hurting. Calliope. The word is as soft as I've ever said it. I roll as much as I can, nuzzling my body against her. After a long moment, she lets her hand drop, slowly, all the way from her shoulder to rest gently on my head. I'm sorry. Her lips barely move. You don't have anything to be sorry for. I close my eyes as her fingernails begin to dig gentle circles against my fur. I'm the one who should apologize. I yelled at you for... Her fingers flex against my neck, and it feels a little bit like being scolded. But you didn't know. But I could have, if I had been more... Somehow, we both sigh at the same time. I guess trying to think of what could have been won't help us. Hmm. But I'm still sorry. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Thank you. The wind is nice, cool, and soothing without making me shiver. Calliope's nails send tingles up and down my body. As gently as I can, I let my tail thump against her leg. You'll go see Dr. Taiwo about the painkillers, right? I'm sure she can help. Yes, I'll ask her tomorrow. Her hand comes over to tickle my chin, and I gently lick her palm. I look up just in time to catch her lips twitch into a small smile. It'll be okay, I say softly. Hmm. With two fingers, she discovers a near-perfect spot behind my ears. I put my snout in the air, turning over legs stiff. She huffs a little, a sound that might almost be a laugh. Your fur is so soft. Her other hand joins in, tracing all over my fur. When she scratches my belly, I just about melt into her lap. I chuckle to keep from moaning. Dude. <laughs> 
See, you got to unload, and I'm still the one getting the better deal out of it. You are? That wry little quirk of her lip again. I'm having fun, too. Not as much as me. Maybe you can pay me back later. I nod, eyes drooping closed again. Right, you can listen to me and I'll pet you. Right, uh... <laughs> We both kind of jerk at that, eyes meeting, then abruptly jump, jumping away. Ah, well, <clears throat> I clear my throat. Anyways, uh, it's getting kind of late. It is. Calliope glances back over her shoulder at the store. Um, honestly. You kind of don't want to go back into a store where you just caused a big scene? Gratitude floods her face. I kind of really do not want to go back. Understandable. <laughs> I press my head against her again. It's cool, I get it. Let's do something else for dinner. Order out. You shouldn't be walking around on that leg more than you need to anyways. Well, Calliope crooks her finger on the spot just on top of my head. I think I'll be okay to walk somewhere that's not too far. But what's close enough to walk to? She nods. What is close enough to walk to? She starts running her fingers down my back, making the, ba the base of my neck buzz pleasantly. What's close enough and quick enough? It takes a while for my synapses to cut through the fluffy haze fog fogging my brain. Wait, 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 do you mean... Calliope leans over, smiling a little lopsidedly. What do I mean? I jumped to all four paws, practically yipping my next words. <laughs> Do you mean Josua's? Do I? Bread. Josua's was a little hole-in-the-wall sandwich place only a block or two away. And hole-in-the-wall was pretty literal, seeing as less than a dozen people could fit inside at one given time. I imagine the kitchen looks a bit like a clown car at rush hour. The small team, combined with some rave reviews, meant that the lines were pretty daunting most days. But the more I think, the more I realize this must be the best time to go. End of the day, middle of the week, juicy, perfectly grilled burgers, the sausage ground with spices with the faintest kick of sweetness. It, it, sausage. I don't... Did I say that right? I don't know. Uh, Diego, please don't drool on my pants. Oh my god, Red, I love you, I love you, I love you so much. Okay. Rubbing at her flushed cheeks with a little with one hand, she takes me in the other, standing slowly, gently trying to maneuver me back into her bag while my tail kicks into overdrive. But Diego. <laughs> what? What is it? She manages to get me inside, gently letting me drop. Her lips twitch again, but not in the shape of a smile. Her mouth seems to be working hard around her next words. Since I told you the thing I was worrying about, can you do the same thing for me? My tail stops wagging. Could you tell me about what happened last night? I placed my paws on the edge of the bag, tilting my head to the sidewalk. The ground is an impossible distance away. Yeah, I'll tell you. Thank you. But... I blow a sigh through my nose. But not now. Please, I swear, I'll tell you later. Right, not now. Not now. I feel a toothy grin spread on my snout. Now is burgers. <clears throat> oh, I get the sense that this is going to be longer than I thought it would be. And uh, my throat is starting to hurt from reading so much. <laughs> So, I think I'm going to call it here and turn this into a three-part series. Hopefully it stops at three. I mean, I'm enjoying it, but I don't like the Indie Sunday videos to uh, continue for very long with just one game. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see. I will see you all next time. Thank you.